Okay. As we're working through these, um, Section 12C is, Concept 12C is just a several more examples for you on proofs and how we work through them, um, just to kind of show our thought process and help you get into the thought process. Okay, these fill in the blank ones, look at the clues that you're given. Okay, so our number one blank, our number for the statement, the reason is given. So obviously we're gonna put our givens in there. Whenever we have our given, we wanna make sure we mark our picture. It was already marked, but we're gonna mark it again just to make sure. Um, and on this one, we're gonna go ahead and have both givens written in there. Okay, so I got ahead of myself a little bit right there. So on st our statement two, they said that the measure of angle two was 90 degrees. Up above, it shows a perpendicular mark in there. So we know it's 90 degrees just because of the definition of perpendicular, okay? Um, my logic as I'm thinking through, I'm trying to fill in number three. It tells me that I'm gonna be working with corresponding angles, okay? So when I'm working with corresponding angles, I can also look down below, they're comparing angle two and angle six. And when I look up top at the picture, angle two and angle six are corresponding angles. So I'm gonna state that they're congruent because that's what the corresponding angles theorem tells me. Uh, we went from a statement that the angles are congruent to the measures are equal. And that is the definition of congruent because we angles are congruent, the measures of the angles are equal. The angles would not be equal unless they are the same angle, two names for the same angle, okay? And then transitive property on number five is probably one of the most used theorem or theorems that properties that we are going to use when we're working through proofs. Okay, so angle two is uh, measure angle two is equal to ninety. Measure angle two is also equal to six. Measure angle six. So since they're that makes them equal to each other by the transitive property. And then lastly, J is perpendicular to K because the definition of perpendicular lines. We have it marked perpendicular up in the picture at 90 degrees, so it's just definition of perpendicular lines. This is also what I would refer to as a give me. Your last one thing should always be your proof, whatever you're trying to prove. So it's never a trick. Okay, next example. Okay, this one can get a little involved. There's information that we know just from looking at the picture and there's also information that's given in our given. Okay, so first off, uh, angles one and two are stated in the given that they're congruent. And angles three and four are also marked, stated that they're congruent. And that's part of the given. Before I get busy with marking three and four congruent, I'm, I'm gonna look at it and I know by looking at the picture that angles two and three are vertical angles, okay? So they're gonna be congruent because they're vertical angles, okay? So, which means I'm gonna go ahead and mark angle th angle four with that same single mark so that they're all, all four angles are congruent, okay? So I know angle one's congruent to angle four because up above, They were both congruent to angle two and three, so they're gonna be congruent to each other. We have a mark that way in the picture. Okay, that's the transitive property. And then lastly, A is parallel, AB is gonna be parallel to CD, because if I look at those, the two highlighted lines as my parallel lines, and the line AC is my transversal. Angles one and four are congruent, which we stated in property three, or step three, and those are alternate interior angles. So those lines are congruent. Since we're using the fact that the angles are congruent to state that the lines are parallel, that's the converse of the alternate interior angles theorem. All right, on this one. This one, our picture is not marked, so make sure you're marking your picture. So we've got A, B, um, A is parallel to B. We'll mark it on our picture. 
We also have the angle two is congruent to angle three. We're gonna mark that on our picture and our reason is given. Okay. Because A is parallel to B, we know that angle one is going to be congruent to angle three because there are alternate interior angles. Okay? And then, since angles one and two are both congruent to angle three, then one and two are gonna be congruent to each other because of the transitive property. And then, since angle one and angle two are congruent and they're cut by line A, that makes angle one and angle two cor corresponding angles, so the lines are parallel by converse of corresponding angles. It is important to remember, when you're looking at these, there's not always just one way to do this. We could have compared two and four, and then gone with three and four by using the interior angles theorem, okay? And the fact that they're supplementary. Uh, so you could have gone that route. That's just not the route that I went. So your proof wouldn't have been wrong, it just would have been different. All right, on our last example, this one's pretty straightforward. We've got line J is parallel to line K. Line K is parallel to line L. Those are both our givens. And then if that's true, then J is gonna be parallel to L by the transitive property of parallel lines. So that was a property you learned. So transitive property of parallel lines. And then if we're looking at lines I, uh, one and six, or angles one and six, off of lines J and L, cut by that transversal, those two angles are gonna be congruent because they are alternate interior angles by, by their position.